Hello everyone, Ryan here. Rebel in the Rye stars Nicholas Holt and Kevin Spacey. And I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Nicholas Holt, he plays J.D. Salinger, of course. J.D. Salinger is the author who wrote The Catcher in the Rye. Uh, this movie, it's primarily about when Salinger started out as a, as a writer. He did go to Columbia University, and it was there that his, I believe I want to say his writing teacher or English teacher of some kind. I don't remember if they actually mentioned exactly which class it was, but uh, this teacher who in, in this movie is played by Kevin Spacey, he's the one that, uh, in fact, I would say the first for a long time, he was the only one who encouraged him to write and keep writing. Uh, I mean, not only did he encourage him, but at some point he actually asked him the question. He asked Salinger the question of, you know, why do you want to write? Why do you want to get your stories published? You know, is it just, to, do you write just to show off to the public? Uh, in which Salinger thought about for a little bit, but then ultimately answered no. You know, and then, uh, so Ken Spacey, as his teacher, you know, told him that, you know, exactly, you know, you write because it's what you love to do. It's what you're passionate about. And, you know, so on and so forth, along those lines. And, you know, it, it, I found it to be very interesting because uh, Salinger's parents weren't really that supportive of, of his writing. Um, I guess maybe his mom was somewhat su supportive in the beginning, but definitely his father wasn't supportive at all. Uh, uh, and of course, I don't know exactly you know, how accurate the details are in this movie. But, yeah, I mean, just going based on what I saw in the movie, uh, his father was, came off as an asshole <laughs> and an unsupportive asshole. I mean, granted, you know, he's his father was all about, you know, which I'm sure a lot of people back then were, you know, all about finding a good job that could pay well. Uh, of course, obviously, minimum wage back then was, and this is during the 30s, 40s. So minimum wage, obviously, back then was uh, <clears throat> very meager, to say the least. <laughs> uh, but that was, you know, that was still back in a time when people still believed that if you worked hard enough, you worked hard and long hours and that, you know, you can make a decent living and not, not only that, but then, but then you only then are you truly worthy of being called a man or, you know, or earning the respect of your fellow man, or, you know, all that typical, typical societal stuff. <laughs> um, which is also interesting because I believe that, I guess, his relationship, the strained, the very strained relationship he had with his father, no doubt ultimately shaped Salinger's writing and also ultimately shaped the character Holden Caulfield. Because uh, then it turns out, like, there's a lot of examples in this movie, uh, which if, if, unless you're familiar with The Catcher in the Rye, obviously you're not going to... Uh, catch all of them but there's different examples in which for me I was able to catch right away uh, that reminded me of Catcher in the Rye reminded me of different things that Holden Caulfield uh, experiences in the novel and and actually Salinger himself or at least in this movie he actually uses the word phony quite a lot. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I guess essentially, you know, Holden Caulfield ended up being 
a version of Salinger himself. But obviously so much more than that. Um, and I actually didn't know that J.D. Salinger fought in World War II. I really didn't know. I guess I really didn't give it any thought. Because uh, <clears throat> I know, obviously, back then a lot of men were drafted. and He was also drafted. Uh, but then it was during his time on the battlefield that he kept working on Catcher in the Rye, kept writing and writing. Originally, he wrote a short story that featured Holden Caulfield. But then his teacher told him uh, that he believed Holden Caulfield deserved an entire novel, and what she ultimately was right about. So, uh, but yeah, while on the battlefield, Holden Caulfield kept writing as much as he could. And in fact, you know, it's, it's easy to, to see how, you know, you could, you could say, I mean, literally his, his writing kept him alive, kept him alert on the, on the battlefield. Cause I guess he had something else to focus on other than war and, and pain and, and grief and, uh, so I don't, I don't, that part alone, just that part alone of this movie, to me, it definitely shows how, I mean, the power of, of art, of artistic expression of, you know, things like writing and, uh, just, you know, art in, in its many forms. And, but yeah, I mean, cause definitely it helped him out during the war, at least that's how it's it's portrayed in, in this movie. Um, and then ultimately, of course, uh, eventually he got Catcher in the, Catcher in the Rye published. Uh, but even then, uh, it was like many publishers, they didn't want to publish it. And it was hard for them to understand, like the main character, Holden Caulfield and because uh, I, I suppose a lot of the stories that were published back then and a lot of novels, it seemed like, I guess, they, they all they were all like fluff and, and like pulp. And it, it was all just, they all conformed to a certain standard of literature. Uh, they all, you know, usually, I guess, the more popular ones tended to be very fluffy, very... Uh, I guess what's the word, like, they had happy endings, but really, like, very unrealistic happy endings. And uh, there's some examples of those kind of stories given in this movie, uh, which I, I was kind of aware of, but I had, I had somewhat forgotten about, so this movie reminded me of that. Uh, and, you know, I say, you know, it's a good thing that guys like Salinger, writers like J.D. Salinger, uh broke down uh those walls i mean though they with guys with writers like sounder you know he introduced to the public a different style of writing and one in which the you know the public ultimately ended up liking uh grand not everyone likes i mean you know still to this day right not everybody likes the catcher in the rye <laughs> But it's, it remains one of the most po popular, you know, one of the best-selling novels of all time, I, I believe. <laughs> there, there's something to the effect of that uh, shown in the movie. Uh, and then, of course, it does touch upon when he moves out into the woods somewhere because eventually he gets too many creepy fans too many creepy fans start stalking him and uh which he doesn't like and i guess ultimately like he he really did just write for the, for the pure pleasure of of writing just because that's what he was passionate about uh he from what i from what i saw in the movie it it looked like, you know, he really didn't like too much attention. And 
So, and then I don't know, and then I'll do some other people, I guess in the movie, people speculated as to whether or not uh, he was very, like, truly affected by the war. And uh, I guess I would say he definitely was. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, how can you not be? It's uh, war definitely affects everyone, I believe. Uh, not just the soldiers, but ultimately, you know, when the soldiers come back home, it, it does affect their family members also. So that's also briefly touched upon in this movie. So, you know, I mean, for being an autobiographical movie, I mean, there's some pretty good stuff in it. I mean, different layers, different aspects. It's not just, it doesn't just focus on, you know, the writing or it doesn't just focus on one part of Salinger's life or it doesn't just focus on uh, how much the war affected him. It focuses on like many different things and which I believe is definitely a good, good sign when it comes to any autobiographical movie because I know sometimes I feel like there's some uh, or not autobiographical what am I saying <laughs> biographical movie uh, cause, you know, I've seen other movies before in which they're about like an artist or a writer uh, but, but then ultimately like they don't really show too much about their life it just focuses on one period so at least this one, I feel it's more, a little bit broader. So, yeah. Because <laughs> obviously, as far as the rating goes, I would give it definite 9 out of 10 at the most. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't know what else. I would say maybe 10, but I don't know. I felt like some of the performances weren't that great, but ultimately, you know, I was able to for set set aside those bad performances and and focus on just the story itself. So yeah, uh, that'll do it. And of course, I, I do re recommend watching it if you're a sound if you're a JD Salinger fan, if you're a fan of Catcher in the Rye. Or even if you're just the least bit curious about how J.D. Salinger got started as a writer. And so, yeah. So once again, I'll do it for my review of Rebel in the Rye. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. As always, till next time, don't forget, keep it real, keep on rocking, and peace.